Um, at first, we have the general IPA ADM um, password uh, setting. This is used to store the Kerberos password for the admin principle. And additionally, we have IPA admin principle, um, which is by default admin, so you only need to set it if your admin is not admin. And we have the IPADM password for the directory manager. So the next one, right directly to the server role. So here we have a server inventory file. Um, so for, for the roles, we are defining um, the, the groups here. So IPA server group is used to deploy um, the initial master. Um, and we also have variables. So you see in, in VARS, we have the admin password, DM password, the domain, the realm, and an additional setting MK home there. And this is called IPA client because it's um, directly going to the IPA client um, deployment part. So every server is also deploying a client uh, with a reduced set of, uh, of settings and options. Um, and this is used for that. So the admin principle is not here because I'm using normally um, admin and I'm not changing it. And I'm not changing it. So here we have some options. This is a selections, selection. Um, so we have the IPAS over domain and realm. Um, if you need to set the host name manually, so overriding what is already there, you can set IPAS over host name. Then it will change the, the host name of the machine or the node. This is not done automatically for you. Um, next setting is important if you already have the packages installed, which I'm doing here in my demo because the yeah, network connection is a little bit um, unstable here. Um, so I already installed all the packages and I'm setting this to no. It's by default true. Um, so it tries not to install any packages. And the next one is uh, also very important for, for Fedora and CentOS and RHEL, and by the way, also for new latest Debian versions, um, is setup firewall D. This is also by default yes, and is um, opening all the ports and services that we need in, in the firewall using firewall D. Um, then we have two um, Boolean settings. So the setup are the AD trust to configure AD trust capability, set up KRA and set up DNS. So for KRA and DNS uh, configuration. And you see also I added here upper client MK home there. Um, and this is only a subset. The whole list of options and parameters that the roles are supporting are documented in the upstream documentation. Everything is there, so. Yeah, that's for you. <laughs> so uh, next time is server deployment. So this is a um, playbook um, that is part of Ansible Free IPA, so it's part of the playbooks folder. It's simply using the IPA server role and our setting, uh, is setting state to present and using the inventory file. So in the deployment, in, in the last line, you see um, how I'm normally calling it. So um, with the inventory you've seen before and in playbooks install server. So if you're using um, the, the GitHub uh, uh, repository directly, you need to manually change or adapt your Ansible configuration to point to the roles and the modules. This is also in the upstream documentation. So and here we are going directly to replica. Um, okay. So for replicas, it's fairly similar, um, but we have IPA replicas because we have only one initial server, so there is only one. And if you have more than one there, they are simply ignored. So only the first one is used. If you have um, IPA replicas, you can deploy several replicas at once using Ansible Free APA. This is only limited by um, the... Um, a number of workers that you're using in Ansible and also by the IPA, IAPA version that you have on your nodes. So for RHEL 7, for example, I would not go far beyond one or two. Um, for RHEL 8, um, I was able to go beyond four, so at the same time using the same server. And here you see, I'm also defining passwords for um, admin and DM, 
and also the domain realm and the MK home dear thing. I'm using this later on in my demo, so I edited it here too. And here we have the options. Well, here we have the options for the hyper replica role. So most of them are the same, but they are using the different prefix hyper replica simply because uh, simply to be able to diverse between server and replica if you have different settings there. But um, if you only have the IPA server domain, IPA server realm, they will be used instead if the IPA replica domain and IPA replica realm are not set. So this is very useful and is used for client deployment that I show later on. And also there is the install packages setting again and also the setup firewall D. Um, for server, the firewall configuration is done after the server is deployed, but for replica, we need to do this before the replica is deployed because there is also the, already the connection check between the replica and the server, and the server is trying to connect to the replica, and if the firewall isn't open, I'm sorry, it will not work. And additionally, we have the setup AD trust and setup CA. This is something that we do not have in server, but in replica, and the KRA and DNS and the MK home there again. So this is the replica deployment that we do normally, so it's also part of the playbooks folder. So if you're simply changing the inventory file, you can simply use the playbooks as is. If you want to use, for example, Ansible Vault, you need to adapt them because you need to provide the path to the vault and you need to integrate it. This is also mentioned in the upstream documentation, but it will be too much for this here. So we are coming directly to client. So and after I've done the slides for server replica and client, I will start a demo already, so in the background for the deployment. So for client, we have the same as for replica, so we have more than one. And we have the IPA client prefix for the variables. Again, domain and realm are used from server if they are set and if the IPA client um, settings are not there. And the next one are the options for IPA client role. So here we have two additional ones that are not part of, um, so the first one is not simply possible, you need to do it on your own, um, with the normal command line installers. So IPA client use OTP is automatically creating an OTP password for you using the controller and the server that you've defined. So, um, a part is done in the controller and a part is done on the server. And the password, if it's vault or not vault, it will, not, it will never ever be passed to the client. Only the one-time password is uh, uh, transferred to the client, so for one-time use. And if you are, are creating the one-time password on your own, you can use IPA client OTP. Um, you cannot simply set um, IPA um, admin password because it will, handle, it will be handled a little bit different. So it will not have the um, uh, result. For example, if you are also deploying a replica because you can also use OTP for the client deployment part of a replica. And then we have the MK Home there as before and the IPA client servers. Oh, I forgot to add this to IPA replica because there's also IPA replica servers. If you want to ping your machine, your, your node, if it's a client or replica to a specific server, you're setting this. But there is a downside. Um, if you do this, all the um, DNS lookup, for example, in Kerberos, will be deactivated. This is IPA deployment. And um, the roles are doing exactly the same. And we have um, one more special one. This is allow repair. So I know from point of Ansible and Atom Potency, this should be done automatically, but sometimes this is not wished. So right now it's still a parameter. Maybe it will depend to, uh, it will default to yes at some point, but I'm not sure about that. So what Allow Repair does is it's trying to analyze the, the client deployment and try to detect errors. So um, if the keto is not correct, if there are files missing. So it tries to repair all the things that are needed to, to have a running client. Um, there is one downside, sure. Um, so if you remove the key tab, it cannot do a lot for you. 
because, yeah, the key tab is something that we, we need and we cannot recreate it easily. There is no way to do that. So, and the next one is install packages again. So, the, to escape package, uh, package installation. And the last one, yes, please. Okay, uh, can you repeat your question? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah, the, uh, the question is, uh, IP, you have IPA client OTP and IPA client use OTP. Yeah. If you, can, if you can't uh, enroll with username and password, then that's the only option. Why does IPA client use OTP exist? Why doesn't it just always use OTP and here you can, uh, you can specify one? So the question was why we have client use OTP and why it's not the default, right? Basically. Yes. Okay. Um, so the OTP stuff has some limitations, so the automatic generation of OTP. So you need to have a controller that is able to do K in it against the server. So you need to have a K in it. You need to be able to g install GSS API. Um, if you want to use the key tab. So this is a limitation. This is why hyperclient OTP has been added. And you cannot use them together. There will be an error. So um, hyperclient OTP is used with the output of hyperhost. In hyperhost, you can say, okay, create a random password for me. I have an example for this later on. <laughs> okay, so, and for the client deployment part, we have, as for all the others, Install client, which is, which is part of the Playbooks folder. And for deployment, you simply call it in the same way as the others. And the good thing is, if we come to the next one, to cluster. So we have the cluster, an example of a cluster environment here. So you see we have the IPA server group, we have the IPA replicas group, we have the IPA clients group. And we define a IPA cluster group without any content besides children and wars. And we are simply attaching all the other groups to IPA cluster and define variables for IPA cluster. So we have the admin password, the DM password, the server domain, server realm, and client MK home there. So all this is automatically um, passed, to, through, uh, passed to the IPA server, IPA replica, and IPA client roles. This is why it's important to have IPA server underscore fallbacks for all the roles for this to simplify the uh, cluster inventory. Because in a cluster, you will most likely not change the domain or the real. It's not supported. And for the deployment, uh, it starts on the left side and continues on the right. This is also in the Playbooks folder. This is install cluster. So you see it first, it deploys the server, then deploys the replicas, and then finally deploys the clients. And here it's using the cluster inventory that you've seen before. So um, it should be fairly simple to combine all the, the things together. Nice is that you can use the cluster inventory also to install only the servers or the replicas or the clients. So you can even say install servers, uh, install server, install replica or install client and it will only do this step. So I think I will start the demo in the background, just a second. Uh, which which window is this? I think this one. So, ah, come on. So, we simply do. Um, here I'm using slightly different names. I can show you. Oh, I think it's too small, isn't it? <laughs> okay, let's make it huge. So. Here, um, if you have a look at this, this is my inventory file I'm using. I'm using CentOS 8.1. This is why I'm using CO 8.1 local, because I have domains for 8.1, 8.0, RHEL, Fedora, and so on. So I'm using slightly different uh, um, domain and realm names. But you see, aside from that, and also different passwords, it's nearly the same as the other one. The only thing that I've, thank you. Additionally, is the install packages stuff. So this, I set this to no because of the network issues that we have here and I'm installing locally here. So what I'm doing right now is I'm simply installing the server part 
So it's using the server machine, doing the tests, creating the master password. So I will continue with the with the um, with the slides at the same time, uh, and we can jump back to this. So the next point is the management modules. So um, for RHEL 8.1, we had already some management modules, so for host, for user, for topology, but they have been limited. And with 8.2, we have by far more um, in there, so more modules, and the modules that we have are providing all features and all uh, parameters that the IPA commands are providing. Also, we have the GSS API support in the same way as Ansible upstream modules for IDM. Um, but there is one, one difference between the upstream modules. So the upstream modules are using um, the JSON API, and we are directly using the, um, the API, the um, IPA API. So um, the parameters for authentication are different and they are in line with the roles. So we have exactly the name, same names here, but all the other parameters for the users, for the hosts, it's the same as, a, uh, as with Ansible upstream modules, but we also support the internal names. So if you know the internal names or the command line names, they are also valid. And um, there is one big change that we have additionally to the Ansible upstream modules. This is support of member actions. So uh, with the Ansible upstream modules, you always need to create, recreate your group if you want to add a user. So you need to get all users that are part of the group, add your user to the list, and write it back, because there is no add a user. There is only, here, this is the set of users that is part of this group. And with the modules that we have, we can add, um, we can ensure that a user is in a group, or we can ensure that a user is not in a group. Additionally, we have also um, um, other um, actions. So um, I will only provide information about the default stuff, so because we do not have a lot of time for the others. So the IPA host module. Um, here's a nice example that you should make, that you might know also from uh, Ansible upstream. Um, it's slightly adapted, so there is the IPA admin password setting here. If, if you can use ticket forwarding or if you can use um, Vault, it will not be here. This is just a simple example. Um, you can enhance it at any time. And you see we have all this, the stuff that is also part of upstream, but additionally, um, we have, if you look here, a additional setting, this is the host setting, um, where you can place addict of users, uh, addict of hosts, I'm sorry, we have the same for users also. Um, aside from that, we use the names from Ansible Upstream, so random certificate and, and so on, or random password and user certificate. User certificate is, for example, an internal name. So, um, but we support them all, which is really nice. And here you see also the additional setting action. This is used to uh, define if you want to act on the host or if you want to change a member. So, um, for example, to add a certificate to existing host entry, we do not need to create the whole thing again. We simply add the certificate with the action member. And we can do this for certificates, for managed host, for principles, and all the create key tab and retrieve key tab settings. There are lots of, and this is way more uh, than I can show in here, so please have a look at upstream for that. And the last one is also known from the Ansible upstream modules. This is update password. So there is one thing. If you define a password in your playbook or inventory file um, for user, or great, thank you, or for a host, um, you need to make sure, you, you might not want to set it every t single time again. We cannot check if the password is still the same because we get something hashed back. So yeah, we, we will write it every time so the atom potency will fail here. So it will say, yeah, we are changing all the time, but yeah, we don't need to. So this is this setting for um, which you can set on create or always. Um, always is the default, by the way. 
also upstream. So, and here we have the OTP, the manual OTP generation that we have been uh, for the question before. So we're using the IPA host module. This is part of Ansible Free APA, and you see it's Ansible Free APA 017 plus, so 82 and up, or Fedora or uh, Galaxy. And we register a result. And the, the modules, part of Ansible upstream, are only returning something um, if you create, uh, if you ask for a random password. This is simply because if we add, let's say, 1,000 users, um, what you get in return will be really huge. So only for this, only for random passwords, we are returning the random passwords. And you see in here, um, we are registering hyperhost result and using hyperhost result host random password. And there is an example also upstream for um, several random passwords. So if you have several hosts, you will get several random passwords back with the random setting. So for every single host, you will get a random password. So, and here we are using Hyper Client OTP. We created the random password beforehand. We're using Hyper Client OTP simply, and it will be doing the right thing in the background for you. And, oh, there is a, there is something missing here, topology. <laughs> so, um, let's go to topology management module. And this is Hyper topology segment. So, if you deployed several replicas, um, you need to um, also add topology segments for that. And this module is uh, um, exactly for this case. And um, it's already part of 8.1. It was not changed for 8.2 because it was already supporting everything that topology segment could do. There is one thing that, we are, that the module is doing um, better than the normal command line tool. The normal command line tool is always asking for a name. In here, um, the name is automatically generated um, from the left and the right node. So um, it first tries to find the nodes and then creates the name accordingly. If it does not try, if not, if if it will not be able to find the nodes, it will fail. But that's expected. And um, for topology, or oh, maybe I should start the next part. Let's have a look. So you see. Here, um, our server deployment was doing all the steps. So we have been setting up NTP, DS, KRB, Custodia, CA, um, OTPD, KRA, DNS. So this is the minimal DNS setup because I was not um, enabling um, setup DNS. So this is only the bare minimum that it does in this step. Um, AD trust is skipped. Um, because we have not enabled it. So it's providing all the information about the, the steps it, that it's doing. And here you see it's doing the setup client deployment part um, with, setting, uh, with setting the, um, the on-master setting, which should not be used outside of this. But we need to have this setting, otherwise we cannot do this client deployment part with the same role. So we are using hyper client role also for server and replica deployments internally. So, um, and you see, finally, the result is good. So it took five minutes, 59 on this notebook. Um, I have limited memory, by the way, but it's still working. So we can go to the next one. So, and go back to the slides. So, and, ah, this is the wrong order. Perfect. So, iPad topology segment um, has some options, as the upstream stuff also. So, we have the suffix, the name, um, direction, and state. Um, for state, we have the additional um, op, um, settings, enabled, disabled. This is not the same as present and absent because um, we need to also have the same functionality as upstream with the IPA commands, and there's also checked or initialized. So you can use the same, um, the same snippet here also for, to reinitialize or um, to enable and disable. And for example, if you mo have more than one topology segment, 
um, that you want to add, you can do something like this here. So we are defining a dict that we are walking in the next step. Um, the, the topology um, segment module is not supporting to do this internally so far. But we've done this for server, we've done, uh, we've done this for host, and we've done this for user. So um, I think we can also add this for, for topology segment because it's, it's a normal use case to have more than one. And you see, we can also, here in the third line, we cannot only add a domain or CA um, topology segment, we can add them at the same time or remove them at the same time. Simply to, um, have less to write. Um, we're going directly to the IP user module. What time is it? Ah, okay. Um, here you see a example for user presence. So we're using user Pinky um, with the first uh, name Pinky and last name Acme with a password that is defined so it will be usable immediately and with the update password. So it will only be set on creation time. So if you run this repeatedly, there will be no change. And this is something that has been added for H2. We can define users as a dict. So not only one user can be added at a time, but several. And it's using exactly the same settings as the other one. So you can provide everything in here that you can pro uh, uh, so you can provide everything in here that we have also in the other one. So all settings. And additionally, we have something really nice with that. So we are defining a JSON file for all our users. So we have a users dictionary in there with the name first, last, and so on. And on the right side, you see, we are simply including it and passing it through the module. And it will do the right thing for you. It will make sure that the users exist. You can also remove them, but then you only should have the name in there. But you can run it repeatedly, and it will not do anything anymore. It will say, yeah, all users are there, we're fine. So no changes. And um, we can also use the random password stuff for users. It's done in the same way as for servers, uh, for hosts, I'm sorry. Um, so it's also returning structures in the same way, but it's not adding host, it's adding user. So, and if you have more than one, it's in the upstream documentation, I'm sorry, it's so long. <laughs> um, so it's a print result. And here we have the options or a selection of that. Um, and you see also here we have the, the special action setting. So we can add principles, managers, certificates, and certificate data separately to a user, or we can ensure that it's there, we can ensure that it's not there. This is also, again, a big advantage over the upstream module in Ansible. Aside from that, all settings that you have for users in upper user command are there. We have some additionally, like for example, the update password stuff again, but I think I would I explained it already, so it's the same for user. And we have the IPA group module. Oh, the machine is getting loud, good. Um, so for group presence, um, here we also have um, advantage um, in the same way as for user and group, uh, for user and uh, host. Um, but aside from that, we are supporting everything, again, from Ansible upstream, com uh, from, I'm sorry, IPA upstream command. Um, so um, we can also use the action. So you see an example here. We have action member. So the user brain will be added to an existing, sys to the existing sysops group. And if you repeat it, there will be no change because it's also able to detect the member. It's already member, so we don't need to do anything. And these are the options for the IPI uh, group module, um, a selection of that. So um, the normal stuff, name or CN, so you can also use CN, the internal name for that. Um, and 
um, we have the user group, servers, and so on. So, but servers has been added for 4.7+. Uh, it's only supported with free IPA 4.7+, I'm sorry. Um, so if you have a version that is older, so something like um, RHEL 7.5, um, it will fail on this one. You will get an error message. It's not the supported thing you can do here. Um, I will look at the deployment, just a second. So um, here you can see we deployed two replicas. So IPA replica 1, CO81 local, and also the number 2. And it's doing nearly the same steps as the initial master but still um, the deployment steps in, um, in the um, command line tools are different. So it's doing exactly the same. It's using internal code for that. And everything is here. And here you see already, uh, again, um, the first stuff it does, it does some, chain, uh, some adaption in the firewall. Um, does the test? Is everything fine for our um, for our uh, deployment? Then it starts the client deployment part. This is a full client. Um, also, the command line tool is doing exactly the same internally. So it's doing a client install first, if it's not there. And we have also the same uh, functionality. So if the client is already deployed, it will skip this step, and you will see only skipped in here. So and after the client is done. Here we have always the, the name of the role inside so that you see where it stopped and where the other one started again. So you see um, the firewall configuration. We do, un we do not need to do this for the client. The client does not need any firewall change, only replica and server. Um, it does the preparation, add the servers, do all the configured things, and finally we are done. So, do you have any questions so far, by the way? No? Perfect. So, let's go to the next one. So, the client part is faster. Less to do. Oh, thank you. So, we have also the IPA sudo rule, uh, IPA sudo module. And there is sudo command and sudo command group also. I limit it just here to upper sudo rule because we do not have a lot of time altogether. So here you can see you can, with h2, this is not part of h1. And sadly, right now there is an issue, but there is a pull request already to fix this. So the command is simply ignored, and the command is using the wrong name. So I'm, sim I'm still using the wrong name here, but yeah, it will be fixed soon as the... <laughs> as the PR made it in. But it will be fixed for, for A2. <laughs> um, and here you see the options. This is also wrong. So <laughs> they have been renamed. Yep, they will be renamed with the PR that is not there. So <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and we also have the, the actions. So you can add users, groups, commands, command groups, and all this to an existing role, and you can remove it also, or ensure the presence and absence. So this is also, again, a big, advancement, a big enhancement um, to the upstream modules um, in Ansible for IDM. And we're going right directly to HBAC rule. So for HBAC rule, we also have um, HBAC rule, we have HBAC command, we have HBAC command group, and so on. Um, I'm just limiting here to one. So uh, HBIC servers, I'm sorry, not command group. So here you see um, we're using, we're adding a HBIC servers, SSHD, that we created beforehand to a new HBIC um, rule that we call login. Here. And here. Ah, the password is here with a big P. Perfect. Um, and we have lots of um, additional playbooks and also tests for this internally. So in, in the playbooks folder, you will find um, playbooks to set HBAC rules to, uh, to ensure the presence and absence and 
uh, for for HBIC services, for everything, you will find example playbooks there that you might use directly if you don't need to change them. So if you have all your settings in the inventory, perfect. Then you can simply directly use the the um, the playbooks that we have there. And here we have the HBIC rule options. So the normal stuff, but please remember the names will change. It's the current state. Okay, I'm going directly to future. So the plans, the plans for Ansible for APA. Um, um, so what we are missing right now are the tools, are the roles for tools like IPA CA install, IPA DNS install, etc. They will be added soon. Um, or started the work soon. We will also need them, for example, um, to, able, to be able to repair or enhance an existing server or replica. So the server and replica role right now are not completely that important, and they will never be able to do so, to be, because we cannot uninstall or unable something like, for example, DNS, CA, and so on. It's simply not possible. It's so deep in the server, we cannot get rid of it anymore. So the only way in this case is to redeploy a new machine with the missing parts. So um, what we will do is if you add something to your inventory file, so, oh, I have not set up DNS before. I'm simply adding set up DNS to, uh, to the inventory file for the server and start the server deployment again. It will activate this, the DNS service for you. So it will, in fact, use the IPA DNS install role that will be created. And for this, we need IPA health check because right now, we are not, it's not simply possible to see what is configured. So um, we will use IPA health check for this. So IPA health check will be integrated or the, it will be used in the roles. So in server and replica for client, we do not really need it, but maybe we will see. And there will be also a IPA health check role, as far as I know, at some point. Um, and we plan to have modules for all other IPA commands. But as you know, there are really a lot of IPA commands, so it might take some time. And additionally, a role for high-level topology management. So to find out, OK, we have a topology here. We are uh, analyzing it with IPA health check. Oh, where do we need to advance this? Where where do we need to add a great, thank you um, a um, topology segment? So a and so on. We will see. It but it will also take some time to get there. So I think we are going back to the demo. And yeah, the clients have been deployed. Also, no failures. Um, and you see also here the client deployment parts. So importing the variables, configuring, testing, NTP. The OTP is skipped here because I was providing the password directly and not asking to, create, to generate a OTP. And you see some things are skipped because they, um, they are in there to, to make life easier. For example, to use a key tab um, also. And so it was joining IPA and so on. So um, we can, should be able to do step four. So we are adding a topology segment that can show you afterwards, after it's done. So we have um, two replicas created already for the server before. And we are adding a topology segment for domain for hyper replica one to hyper replica two. Um, and we can simply redo, and you will see it will not say changed anymore. So it says OK. So no change happened. It's already there. Um, and since we are running out of time, I'll do this. This will create 500 users using hyperhost with a JSON file. I can show you. Um, yeah, this will take a minute. So I think we can start with the questions in between and have a look at this later on. So do you have questions? I was going to ask, yeah. because we don't have everything in modules yet, can we use the Ansible um, like shell to call the command 
Yeah, sure. Oh, uh, the question was if we are able to use the normal Ansible com uh, IPA commands. Yes, we can do with simpler command. So, um, but you will um, you will lose a little bit of functionality with this. So, yeah. The next question. Uh, you said that you couldn't uh, use this, the playbook to say remove DNS. Or yeah. That, but if you reissue, is, is it uh, assuming that it works the first time? Is it uh, item potent if you ran the same uh, ins the server install or the replica install the second time? So the question was if um, the roles are item hardened right now, as we are not able to remove something, are they able to detect what we have already? Well, uh, uh, assuming you ran the yeah. same exact script the second yeah. time. Yeah. Is it going to change anything, or is it just going to say okay? Okay. The f um, the first step in the deployment is to analyze. Okay, we have already a server. This is also part of the more normal command line tools. They're detecting. Oh, we have a server already, and please um, undeploy the server or in start a new deployment if you want to redeploy. Um, the the roles will detect. Okay, we have a, already the de the deployment of the server or the replica, and skipping all the remaining stuff. Um, they, uh, if we have the IPA health check integration, we are able to see what is there, what we can do, what we need to do. But we need this first. Right now, it's simply skipping the, the deployment process. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, yeah. From a shooting perspective, if something is broken, should we take us to debug local um, Pan, can you repeat that? So the question is, if we need to concentrate on Ansible free APA or free APA if there is something broken, that really depends on the use case, I would say. Um, so if the module is failing because there is an issue in the module, we need to have a look at Ansible free APA. If there is an issue in free APA itself, the Ansible module cannot do anything about this. We need to have a look at the logs and free APA internally. Okay, but uh, I have in my mind, for example, if you run the command debug level what something, you can see the um, yes, we can Ansible force to do more debugging, but there is a limitation. We cannot print it out easily, so everything that is printed on standard out will be redirected. So only a log file is possible. Yeah, every, every output of a module to standard out will be interpreted as part of JSON output, so it will crash. So we have five minutes. Any more questions? No? Then thank you. Oh, yeah, I read the. Oh, I'm sorry. So the users, you see, uh, it's done. No error. It didn't fail. And so we can also log into the machine. Wait. This one should be there. Uh, and this is part of the next. Wait, we can do this also. I was not setting um, passwords for the users, so I cannot log in <laughs> using those users. But here, there is a password. This is the group test. And so we should be able to log into the client with the password that is provided there. But Oh, I think I forgot the MK holder here, maybe. Um, but I can show you the this here. So it's simply creating a user with a password test. Um, yeah, it will fail. Uh, not fail. It will complain that the user home directory is not there. I forgot the MK home there <laughs> for deployment. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, here you see <laughs> the directory is not there, but we have been able to log in. So, good example. <laughs> <laughs>